I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my channel and the website globalmathinstitute.com. In the series on calculus, we have added a new unit which deals with inverse function derivatives. To begin with, we'll try to understand what is inverse function derivatives test. So, so the concept here is that derivative test for inverse function to be an inverse function, how should we perform this? Now, to explain the concept, I'm taking help of visual presentation and the explanation. I'm assuming that most of the students know how do we find an inverse function and after all, what is an inverse function? So that you should know before getting into this video. Well, here's a recap. Inverse of one to one function is a function, right? So that is the basic. Graph of such a function should have following characteristics, mainly two. That is, it passes a horizontal line test and it is strictly non-increasing or non-decreasing. We also say monotonic. So what I'm trying to say here is that if you have a graph which is kind of increasing or it is decreasing, then it is called monotonic. It is important to note that the graph can have horizontal portion, right? So this is like a horizontal line. Means uh, the derivative of the function will be equal to zero. Otherwise, you find that the derivative of this function, which is decreasing, will always be less than zero, right? On the other hand, the function which I have drawn earlier, so derivative of this function is greater than or equal to zero. So I'm putting equal to also. So if a function is, that is why we say non-increasing or non-decreasing. So you can say this is non-decreasing. It is not decreasing. And this is not increasing. That's what we mean by these terms. So I hope that concept is absolutely clear. So if you have a function like this, in that case, the inverse of the function will be a function. Clear. Now you have understood what the basics is and how can we now use the first derivative? Well, as you have seen, the first derivative should be either positive or negative. Correct? I mean, it could be zero. But it should not change sign. That is important. And therefore, first derivative is positive for increasing function and negative for decreasing function. If the first derivative does not change sign, then the function is strictly monotonic and its inverse will be a function. Clear? Now have a look at the graph and understand what we are trying to show. So if you take a parabola as shown in the particular graph, you will realize that it fails the horizontal line test. And therefore, in case of a parabola, the inverse will not be a function. However, if we restrict the domain of the parabola, taking either side from the vertex, for example, we are only considering one half of this parabola. That will pass the vertical line test and that will be monotonic also. So in that case, its inverse will be a function. You can also see that in case of a cubic function, which is always increasing as shown, the inverse will be a function. So we are showing variations in these particular graphs to understand the whole concept, right? So I hope this concept is clear to you. Perfect. Now, Based on this, we have two examples just to verify 
how do we apply this particular inverse function derivative test. So, example is, use derivative test to determine if the function has an inverse that is a function, correct? Two examples, question one is x squared plus 2 and question two is x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x. So, these are the two functions given to you. You have to show whether their inverse will be a function or not using derivative test, correct? So, I hope you got the concept. You can now pause the video and answer this question. So, let's take a shot at the solution now. So, the very first function, I have named it at g of x as you have seen here. So, we are saying g of x is equal to x square plus 1. Let's find the derivative of this. g prime of x will be 2x, correct? Now, this derivative has a critical number. So, what is the critical point here? So, let's say critical number, let's say, is when g prime x is equal to 0. So, that happens when x is equal to 0, right? So, 2x equals to 0 will be 0 when x is equal to 0. So, we do have a point in this graph where x is equal to 0. Now, what we can do is that we can analyze the first derivative. In this case, uh, g prime x, right? So, we have g prime x as 0 at one particular point and this happens at x equals to 0. Correct? Now, on either side, we can take test points. So, we know g prime x is basically equals to 2 times x. Now, we can test it with a point on the left side and a point on the right side. Correct? So, if I have point on the left side, let us say we have minus 1, then g prime of minus 1 will be minus 2. And if you have a point which is on the right side as plus 1, then g prime for 1 will be 2. Correct? Substituting x as plus 1 this time. So, what we really notice is that in this particular case, on the left side it is negative and on the right side it is positive. Now, since g prime x changes sign the inverse is not a function. In the inverse, let me write g prime, g, g inverse x is not a function. Is that clear to you? So, that is how we can use the derivative test. As you know clearly, if I sketch this parabola, then how will this look like? So, let me make a small sketch here. So, the parabola x square plus 1 will be something like this, right? As you know, it fails the horizontal line test, right? If I draw a horizontal line, it fails the test. And also, if I sketch the inverse of this particular function, that is to say, if I reflect it on a line y equals to x, as shown also in our graph, then what do we get? Well, in that case, we get a graph which is kind of like this, right? So, when you reflect it, it will be kind of like this, which is not a function, perfect, since it fails the vertical line test. So, it really confirms, correct? It goes from decreasing to increasing, right? And so, the derivative, which is a straight line, is negative on the left side and positive on the right side. So, I hope this concept is absolutely clear. Perfect. Now, let us take up the next example. We have a cubic function here, which is x cubed minus 6x squared plus 12x. Let us call this as f of x. So, let us write f of x is equal to 
x cube minus 6x square plus 12x. So, what is its derivative? Well, the derivative is 3x square minus 12x. This is x, right? So, plus 12. Now, here we can take 3 common. So, we get x square minus 4x plus 4. And uh, this is a perfect square, right? So, I could derive, factor this as x minus 2 whole square. Now, you can see that this particular derivative, it is non-negative, right? It is non-negative. That means it is monotonic. Perfect. So, it is 0, of course, at 2. So, when you test this out, then you know that the derivative of this particular function is 0 at, at x equals to 2. However, on either side, it is positive. And therefore, it is never changing sign, right? Not changing sign. And from the derivative, inverse derivative function test, we have now shown that since it is not changing sign, inverse of fx is a function. Is that clear to you? So, that is how the derivative test is applied to figure out whether the inverse is a function or not a function. So, it is a very short process quickly you can get to the result. Watch the video. Graphics of this particular function and see how by changing different parameters we do see that this particular function for different values is always increasing and therefore its inverse will be always as shown here a function. You get the idea. So, that is how we can derive at the result. Now, here is the solution of what we just discussed. So, basically, if you are given a function, the first step is to find the derivative, then find zeros and analyze the derivative on either side of the zero. If the sign changes, then the derivative sign has changed and therefore, it is not strictly increasing or strictly decreasing and therefore, its inverse will not be a function. On the other hand, we found that the derivative of the cubic equation was factored as 3 times x minus 2 whole square. It will be 0 at 2, but on the entire domain, it is non-negative. Since it is non-negative, it is monotonic and therefore, it qualifies as inverse being a function. Does it make sense to you? That is how we come to this conclusion. So, I hope the whole concept is absolutely clear. Now, with this in mind, we will look into the relationships of derivatives of inverse functions. So, I hope you are ready to take up calculus relating to inverse function derivatives. Thanks for your time and all the best.